I'm Diasha. In our previous lesson, we joined John in the lab to see how he made copper 2 sulfate. Remember, to make copper 2 sulfate, he heated up the base, copper 2 oxide, with the sulfuric acid. He left the solution to form in an evaporating dish so that the water would evaporate. Let's go and see if any salt crystals have formed yet. Hi everyone, I want to show you the results from our previous lesson. Remember we reacted black copper oxide with some sulfuric acid. Have a look what's happening inside the evaporating basin. Wonderful blue copper sulfate crystals are forming. But there's one last thing that I want to show you in today's lesson. We can make these same crystals by doing a different method. I'm going to use some copper to carbonate, which is a green powder. Put it into this evaporating basin. And now I'm going to add the sulfuric acid. Watch what happens. That fizz and bubbling is releasing carbon dioxide and the solution is changing color too. I'm going to carry on adding the acid until it stops fizzing. Now when this reaction is complete, the same copper 2 sulfate crystals will form. Let's go back to the studio now so that you can write the balanced equations. Right. Remember, John started with copper 2 carbonate and then added sulfuric acid. This is an example of an acid and carbonate reaction. Do you remember the general equation? Here it is. An acid plus a carbonate react to form salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. So in this case, we have sulfuric acid with the formula H2SO4 plus copper 2 carbonate, which is CuCO3. Our salt is then copper 2 sulfate, which is CuSO3. O4 plus carbon dioxide CO2 plus water H2O. Now, can you see that John was able to prepare the same salt, copper 2 sulfate, using two different methods? But which method is the best one to use? Well, that is the focus of this lesson. Here are the outcomes we want to achieve. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to evaluate different methods of salt preparation, select a method for preparing a salt when given the reactants, and write balanced chemical equations for salt preparations. So far, we have considered two ways of preparing copper 2 sulfate. The first method was using the base, copper 2 oxide, and sulfuric acid and the second was using copper 2 carbonate and sulfuric acid. Let's evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of each method. When we used the base plus acid method here, the black copper 2 oxide was not soluble and did not react very easily with the acid. We had to heat it up and even then some black copper 2 oxide remained behind unreacted. This meant that we needed to filter the mixture in order to get a pure product. This method does not allow us to use a chemical indicator because the color of the solution changes from a black sludge to a blue solution. However, we were able to crystallize out some crystals. Now, what about the acid plus carbonate method? Here the reaction takes place very quickly. And we need to make sure that some of the copper 2 carbonate does not splatter out of the flask. By adding the acid slowly, we can avoid a lot of the splatter. We can also add some distilled water to the carbonate before starting the reaction. 
Although we cannot use an indicator here because the color of the mixture is changing, the gas bubbles released give us an indication when the reaction is completed. Notice that all the carbonate reacted and we were able to form a pure salt without filtering. If we had left the evaporating dish in a warm place, the water would have evaporated and salt crystals would have formed. So, in this case, it seems that the carbonate plus acid method would be the best. But is this always true? Well, the acid plus carbonate method has definite advantages, not only when preparing copper to sulfate, but when preparing other salts too. In fact, it is the one method that will work for all salts. So it is important to practice writing balanced chemical equations for this method. The only real disadvantage against using this method is the way in which the gas is released. If we do not control this carefully, the reaction goes too quickly and products and reactants can be wasted in the bubbling froth. This means that reactivity is something we need to think about when choosing the best method. Can you remember the reactivity series for metals? They are potassium, sodium, lithium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, lead, mercury, copper and silver. The reactivity series can help us choose the best method of preparing salts. I want to focus on the most reactive metals from group 1. Potassium, sodium and lithium. All of these form metal oxides that are soluble. Remember, soluble metal oxides are called alkalis. A solution of ammonia is also an alkali. So I'm going to include ammonia with these group 1 metals. The most common way of forming salts of these substances is the acid plus alkali method. Of course, we could also use the acid plus carbonate method here too. Now, what about the other metals on the reactivity series? These do not form soluble bases. So, if we are going to use the metal oxides of these metals, we will use an acid plus a base method. Although this is a good method, it does require heating, particularly for the less soluble metal oxides like iron, lead and copper. For all these metals, salts can be made using the acid plus carbonate method. So, of the three methods I've shown you thus far, I'm sure you can see that this really is simply the best. Now, before we wrap up this lesson, there's just one more important point to take note of. These methods can only be used to prepare soluble salts. Some salts are not soluble and we will need to find a different method to prepare these insoluble salts. This will be dealt with in a series called Chemical Solutions. Let's take a look at today's task. Take a careful look at this list of reactants. Sodium carbonate, zinc oxide, sodium hydroxide, zinc carbonate, hydrochloric acid, and sulfuric acid. What salts can you prepare using these reactants? Write balanced chemical equations to show the method you have chosen. Make sure you don't miss our last lesson in this series where we will investigate one final acid reaction. This will give us another way to prepare salts from some metals. If it is not used correctly, it can be highly dangerous and even create an explosion, something John really enjoys. So please join us to wrap up this series with a bang. 
See you soon. Goodbye. Yeah.